morning we are on site today and I'm just going to trim around this window made some videos on these windows spiral balances so I'll get that edited as and when I can but uh, that'll be a future video future upload a nice little one in there in that bathroom absolutely beautiful that is a gorgeous little room or will be eventually so I've got this tiny little work area to work in at the minute and this is all of my site fitting equipment apart from my chop saw and my table saw it's a compact fits on my little wheels i can wheel that where i want for storage and then i've just got a couple more boxes here that uh, nip out of the way so absolutely everything i need is in there and it's such a brilliant system can't recommend it enough get that nice and level find out where the highest spot is
Just using a little block of architrave to test how much I need to plane off the back of it here in a little rebate so that it sits nicely against the lining and the wall. I think we just run that up the edge of the lining there till we find out the position where we don't need to plane any off. It starts there and we need a mill. It's two mil, three mil, four mil. When you're rebating these architraves, it works really well to have like a soft mat. I'm using a, an old yoga mat, but it, it works really well on your bench because it stops the architrave slipping under the planer as you, as you run the planer along. And also it doesn't damage the paint finish on the finished side of your architrave. So we go, a bit of a rebate in the back of that architrave. And you want these to sit dead flat with the plane of the lining, so nice and sort of flat there, and like a perfect gap down the back of the architrave there. And uh, if they don't sit flat, if they sit like slightly cranked like that, that's obviously an extreme version, but if you put them on, they sit like this as an individual architrave at the mitre, it affects how that mitre joint intersects so to get a perfect mitre cut on your saw to make it look perfect on the actual window it has to be perfectly flat around that plane for them two pieces so really important to get that part of the architrave sitting nicely before you try and make these mitres work i used to make my lining suit like the widest bit of the frame and fill the back of the architrave but i actually prefer this method now where you, you get your linings to suit the narrowest part or you know maybe two mil wider than the narrowest part of the brickwork so you've only got at most a two mil gap behind the back of the architrave and then rebate all your architraves to suit using this method so you sort of work out how much you need at each spot mark it on your architrave and then and rebate it with the planer Probably going to keep banging on about these drawers but they are just unbelievable i've done with my pin gun slip it back in there everything to do with the pin gun pins batteries all in there just slip it away nice neat tidy no boxes in the way so architrave on a pre-glued with some ms polymer adhesive around the lining pushed it onto it get a nice squeeze and nice adhesion between the two I can clean that off and get a perfect line ready for painting. It's not the same as squirting a bit of cork in afterwards because then it doesn't adhere and can peel off. A bit of polyurethane glue on the mitre joint there. I'll just clean that off with some IPA cleaner.
just to finish this one off, got a bit of powdered um, easy fill here, a small tool. Just fill that in, leave it a bit proud, it should be nice and easy to sand off. Just that away to date. Quite difficult to do one handed actually. I left my tripod at home today, so I've been making do with uh, masking tape and various toolboxes to prop the phone up, so apologies for the less than ideal camera angles. There we go, all finished, that's looking beautiful. Got a nice perimeter gap all the way around the window, matching perfectly along the top and down the sides and you always have a bit deeper gap at the bottom of a sash window because of the tool sill and I've filled in, corked in down the sides with a bit of OB1 sealant to the back of the architrave so that's all nice and flush for the customer to get painted and once that filler has gone off uh, tomorrow or so, say a light sanding block, bit of wood just get everything nice and square within that joint so that you don't get that nasty like rounded mark from where you smudge a bit of cork in after the fact and round it over with your finger you've got that lovely nice sharp square look and they're just the most beautiful windows sash windows you cannot beat them little preview to the video that i do on the sash windows these are um, spiral balance windows but i've hidden the balances in the frames themselves so you don't actually get to see the tube balance that supports them and sort of holds the window up it's hidden behind a little piece of wood in the frame so quite a cool little design one more look at this window it's just one of the most beautiful things so simple but look how beautiful that is can't wait to see that one finished. Got bloody wasp nests in the extractor shed, so just expanding, foamed them up, see if that stops them. Ain't very happy. Back at the workshop, and it's full steam ahead on this oak job. So tonight I'm just going to start making a little jig to cut the braces out of these pieces here. They're 300 by 100 mil boards. We actually ordered these as uh, one meter long pieces. There's enough bits there to cut one brace out of each piece, but they've sent them like 1.9s in places. <laughs> so hopefully we can get two out of each length of a brace, which would be nice, save a bit of wood. All right, mate. <laughs> Caught in the axe. <laughs> Is that your fuel? Yeah. So make a little jig to cut these off. There's a piece of plywood set in and it ends of my braces here. 163 mil, which is the offset from my saw to the blade. And again, 163 mil here with a 90 degree cut. So I can just take this piece of material here and uh, take the dimensions of it, cut them out in real life, and then I've got a jig to cut the extremes of the braces off. So I'll do that now. I used to store all my drills up here and I just walked over here to get my drill. I was like, where's all my drills gone? Ta-da! Built a new rack at the weekend to house all my bits and stuff on and uh, see what's missing and what I need to order. 
and uh, it's here. I was missing it. <laughs> and on this one, thank you. The connoisseurs among you will note the spacing of the drill bits is the same, even though the diminishing sizes. It's a beautiful little bit of workshop pride right there. Okay, that'll do for today. Let me know your thoughts on the bog style videos. Um, tell you what would be interesting was if you comment below when you watch a daily video of what you've been doing yourself and whether you recommend your career path to someone else and, and why. So I really enjoy what I do. It was a long time uh, through the years learning just every aspect of the trade. I, I just wanted to know every bit of info that I could spent a lot of time sort of uh, at the bottom of the ladder just beavering away getting a lot of info and it's only the last few years where I really sort of have realized my worth in this industry and I'm really enjoying it and getting paid accordingly I think so um, yeah say what you've been up to in uh, in your daily life and whether you would recommend that career path to someone else I totally would but I think it's a tricky career to take a path in uh, especially bench joinery the amount of investment and knowledge is absolutely huge. And it seems to be one of the lowest paid industries um, in the construction industry. So um, yeah, interesting to hear your thoughts on that. I'll see you next time. Well, I'll just come down to uh, lock the shed up. Looks like that's focus, a beautiful red sunset over there. on the oak. Just enough.